Alright guys, welcome back. So, just carry on from where we left off in episode 2. Uh, we had just seen Ross, and yeah, he was interesting. I'll just quickly go back over him again, because I feel like I had to rush that last section at the end there. Interesting, because like, he got throws down at 6, heading 9, free kick 7, yet he's got them up. So this, they've kind of balanced it, rather than a 10. Um, they've nudged him up a little, and factors i think just because of the vision the creativity side it must have then an impact on those technicals which are linked to the passing side of the game so that explains that ross's super perk was the work right so um my prediction for him yeah he, i think with that work he could go either way he could go either way he's gonna face competition he should definitely make up into a premiership player but um I'm not sure if he'll hit the heights. He'll hit the heights, but we'll see. Okay, so moving on to the more attacking players. Mark Dribble Beasley. Uh, Beasley, I think, yeah, he can play for either Ireland or England. His first national is Irish. Um, he was one of... I mentioned earlier that there were six who definitely played play for Ireland, but I think I actually made Beasley so that there was a chance England could pick him up, but he's more than likely he'll, he'll play for Ireland. So as a winger, you know... You, you need good dribbling, good crossing ability. So the fact that he's got that dribbling perk there and the determination, he, he should really make into a high-quality right-sided attacking player. He's got competition from Monday for game time in his youth development. Um, Monday, he'll be competing with Baldwin and uh, Beasley in those positions. Um, I've made him crossing and both-footed, so he does have that advantage to play either side, rotate in. Um, again, the tens there, but crossing, he's got the, the foundation, he's got the work rate, Beasley's got the determination, and Bourne's got the determination. So you can already see from the people who have the work rate, they tend to have them more flat on the tens. Whereas the guys with the determination 20, they're already sort of pushing 11s on these sort of things. So you can already see from that early age, just from the game, they're, they're more driven to determine to for that success. But by no means will they necessarily flop. These ratings can go up and down, as you saw with Ross. Uh, as their career develops, you know, you might, you know, you're not, as a, a winger or a striker, you're not going to need tackling of a 10 and things like these. So these naturally should come down over time because you're not going to be training them. Um, Borden I showed you in the last video and again for time purposes go back to that one James Touch Mills doesn't mean he goes around touching people but uh, he's got a good first touch he's playing in that role where you probably do need a first touch you need to be in the pocket between the, the attack and midfield uh, be interesting to see how he develops if they can always retrain them into certain other position he's got work ethic which you wouldn't necessarily um, think anyone who plays in that advanced playmaker role work ethic it's not really their their sort of thing so this work rate will should push up all his physicals so with the touch and the physicals he should make into you know a playmaking machine assists uh he should be up there with when we look back over our careers how many assists people got he should he should have one of the highest looking back that'll be a prediction there with with that first touch and playmaking role Okay, and just one thing before I go on to the attackers. Our age, I've made us all our birthdays the same. So the, our birthday, and I made it the 25th of March, which is the day we go to Vegas. But obviously, 1998 is the year they're born in this game, but just the date, 25th March, the day we go to Vegas. Okay, so um, moving on to Matt Composure Customs. As an attacker, you need really finishing and composure... They're two fundamental things. Composure will just mean in these one-on-one -on -one situations, Matt, he's not he's just going to pretty much score 90% of the time just because he's not flustered. He's got the good first touch. His finishing will improve through his development. He's determined. That's key there. This is, what, again, you've seen this, this from an initial experiment. Determination is pushing up all these other um, attributes. So even though he's value, I think, less than Alex. We'll come on to Alex in a second. Um, 
that composure, I think, is going to stand him in really good stead, and he'll make into England's striker. His favoured personnel, uh, James Baldwin, friend. So it seems to work for him. I don't know why I was trying to show you on earlier with um, Stephen. It didn't work. But yeah, you can see Middlesbrough supporter. And I don't know where the media have got this from. Could be the next Alan Shearer. Just, maybe that's just because he, you know, he's young and he's got, he's got all the attributes. I don't think they mean it in the pundit, punditry role. That's why the first thing that came to my mind. Okay, um, moving on to Alex Movement Tumba. I've given him his medium perk of off the ball. Because of his movement, you know, his good movement, ATGP, always creating space for others. This will stand him in good stead. It probably won't mean, like, he won't be a prolific goal scorer as Matt. That would be my prediction, just because you know, Matt has that composure advantage and already that's pushed up his his determination, has pushed up his things like finishing. But I expect Alex, with this work rate, the physicals to go up over time, and he'll be that type of striker that, you know, can play on the shoulder of a defender or work really defensively hard. So he, he, I see him being like a defensive forward, closing down, this type of thing. That would be my prediction, but also chipping in with the goals because he does have the potential bit of 199. So, okay, that, I mean, that wraps up everyone. Um, again, I can't – I wish I could just post all these videos in one go, uh, but I'm hamstrung by the fact that I can only do 10 minutes and my editing skills are non-existent. But um, in the future, hopefully, I will pick up these editing skills and rather than having to do you having to click on loads of different videos, we can just get one 30-minute one out of the way because as our careers develop, I'm going to be needing a lot more time to say things and note this thing because I'll be, I'll be clicking on different things, your career, your stats, these type of things. So we will need the 30 minutes per episode. But just in this early stage, it's okay to go through 10 minutes at a time. Um, but now I want – before I – do go manage a holiday for a year, go into the future just to see how things have changed from year 16 to 17. Um, before I do that, I want you to hopefully get a chance to view all the videos. Hit me back with some comments, whether you're, uh, what you think, what about your predictions. I know Ross has already got back to me on WhatsApp saying he'll be happy if he j makes a England international appearance. But we should all be in the youth setup just because we're standout youths. So you can also have this into your expectations. Like, our, the, like I mentioned, the Ireland golden generation, we should be really dominant in the youth thing. I mean, we can see goals, we should we should be upset. But uh, England, just because the database is England, they're going to have a better natural pool. So uh, you're going to be competing against other random players that the game hasn't yet created that might impact your international career whereas Ireland are probably not going to have the same pool of talent so the Irish boys probably have more of a successful career but then England are more likely to win things in that regard because the other players who aren't part of our Gunnersbury uh, fantasy world are going to be better for England so although it might be harder to represent England they're more likely to still win things and it's interesting to see where Baldwin goes in his career in terms of England or Ireland. Beasley, I'm not sure. I can't remember if I definitely made him Irish. Probably did. But the likes of people who could play for either Mills could play for England or Ireland and maybe Scotland as well. I threw that in because he loves Scottish things. I'm trying to see. I don't know why it's not come up. Let's go to nationalities. Yep. So, so he's, he's eligible for Ireland, England, Scotland. Novak and Nick I touched on before. Nick's Greek and Novak. He's eligible. Let me see if he's eligible or if I made him Slovakian. So he's eligible. He can still play. He's uncapped. He can play for all of those countries. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a scramble for him, if it impacts his value, this type of thing. And, yeah, the weight. Don't really know what is a weight. It's just a probably a variable. I've got a feeling that those with higher work rate will be bigger just a theory I don't know how you can find out about our um, height and things like that oh no the height's there so yeah Stephen's quite tall 189 centimetres don't know just random I guess because he's got determination so my theory that work rate would mean we're all bulkier or taller it's not it's not uh, doesn't look too accurate here so um that's that for this video. That wraps up the first three-part installment. So I'll wait for you to get back to me, and then 
we'll go a year into the future and see how we've all developed and see what's going on. All right. Speak soon.